Hi, this is Mike from thesubstream.com and we have a special bulletin message for anyone that happens to be watching. Seeing how first and foremost, we love good movies, not, not blockbusters, not art house movies, not genre movies, not foreign almodovars, not blood curdlers, not epic 18th century fancy court dance. Just good movies, no matter where they come from, how much they cost, or what genre they're from. We feel it's our responsibility to reach out into the world and let people know when there's a really good movie that's out there, especially when they're a little bit harder than average to find. In this case, I'm talking about the girl with the dragon tattoo, which I'm sure you've heard of because apparently almost 50 million people have read the book that it's based on, the Swedish title of which is The Men Who Hate Women, but the English title being The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. It's the first in a series of three books that was written by a Swedish journalist named Stig Larsson, who didn't live to see the enormous fortune that his books and the movies based on those books would eventually produce, because he died in 2004 or five right before the first of the three books came out. To make things even more interesting, there's this really weird situation going on with him that Christopher Hitchens wrote a good article in Vanity Fair about, about how he died, when he died, he had left a will that gave all of his earthly possessions, which he didn't know was going to be millions and millions of dollars when he wrote it, or even when he died, to the Communist Party in the hometown where he's from. But that will wasn't witnessed, so it wasn't legal, and all of the money went to his dad and his brother, whom he apparently didn't speak to that much. He had a long-term partner that he would have married, apparently, except in Sweden, when you get married, you have to put in your address and register with the government, and he didn't want to do that because during his life, he was an outspoken anti-fascist, anti-white power investigative journalist, and he had gotten a bunch of death threats. So he never married and never registered his address. So when he died, his would-be erstwhile wife didn't get any control over the enormous fortune that his posthumously published books and films produced. The Hitchens article is great. You should go check it out. It's a fascinating story. We'll see where it goes. Anyway, there have been two more films produced from the two other books in the Millennium Trilogy, those being The Girl That Kicked the Hornet's Nest and The Girl That Played with Fire. And one of those has been released in Sweden and is supposed to be as good as this one is as well. And the third is going to come out this year in both Sweden and in North America. So we're in a neat position where we get to go see some really cool Swedish detective films, three of which are going to come out in the same year. There's talk of a big budget Hollywood blockbuster remake of the first film, may be directed by David Fincher, but there's no guarantee that it's going to be half as good as the original Swedish film, which had come out in Canada in the past couple of days in the States as well. And it's a little bit long, it's over two hours, but it's an absolute must see, especially if you're a fan of not just good movies, but good, solid, detective filmmaking, which I am. 